Hello everyone, I'm Ved Patwardhan and today we'll be talking about function wrapping. So function wrapping is a very important part of IV because it enables having a lot of different kinds of logic handled which is common for a lot of functions to enable users to access different kinds of backend implementations of functions through a common functional API. Now uh, I'll just read out the docs first. So when a backend framework is set by calling iv.setBackend, then all IV functions are wrapped and this is achieved by calling the wrap function. So in a previous video related to backend handling, you might have noticed the way uh, backend setting happens. So when you call setBackend, the global IV dictionary is updated to replace all the functions which are there in the dictionary by their corresponding backend specific uh, counterpart. Now this line out of that uh, set backend function is where all the wrappings are applied for a particular function. So the wrap function, uh, which is a part of the uh, function wrapper, it enables to apply whatever wrappings are applicable to one particular function. So uh, the way it works is that, uh, firstly, currently uh, at the time of recording, all function wrapping is handled with the help of Python decorators because it provides us a very clean and flexible way of applying wrapping. Uh, and this line where we are uh, checking whether a particular uh, wrapping is applicable or not, these are all the decorators which are uh, applied for a particular uh, function. So we're just checking if a particular uh, wrapper is applicable or not. Uh, so whenever you add a decorator to a function, uh, it is applicable. And then if it's applicable, then the wrapping is applied. So the example in the docs covers ABS. So I'll just go through ABS. So this is a common pattern you must have noticed across uh, all the functions in IB is, uh, is that every function has a number of decorators uh, and these are all the wrappings which are applicable for that function. So let's go through them one by one. Yeah. So the first uh, wrapper, I'll just go according to the sequence in this file, uh, but uh, like this, these are the wrappers which are at the time of recording, although this might change depending on when you're watching this video. So the first one is inputs to native arrays. So when we have inputs in the form of IV arrays, which are passed to the IV function, when we are going to defer to the corresponding backend specific function, we don't need, we cannot pass IV arrays to it. We should be passing a native array. So uh, just the example ABS, so torch.abs will be accepting a torch tensor instead of an IV array. So we need to convert all the IV arrays in the positional and keyword arguments into native array instances before you pass it uh, to the backend specific function. And this is why we need that decorator. Now the way it works is uh, pretty straightforward. We're just converting all arguments native and then we are calling the function with those arguments. And this part where we are setting this attribute, this is where, what is eventually used in the wrap function to know whether a particular wrapping is applicable or not. So when you add this decorator, this is going to be true and accordingly a wrapping will be applied. Uh, inputs to IV arrays. Now this is a wrapper which is very useful uh, in compositional functions. So uh, when we have a compositional function, so it a compositional function is a function which uses a number of uh, other IV functions internally, and it does not have a backend specific implementation. It does not need a backend specific implementation either. So in such cases, when a compositional function has uh, an operator, it's line with an operator at the start, we want to make sure that it does not defer to the backend specific uh, operator function it should defer to the IV operator function. So if, the, if it's a native array, it's going to defer to the backend specific operator function, which we don't have control of. So it's not a desirable outcome. So we want to convert every input to IV array in such cases. So in a lot of uh, functions in the gradient sub module, for example, where there are a lot of co uh, compositional functions, uh, this decorator is used. Outputs to IV arrays. Now, this is a decorator which is kind of the second step of what I mentioned earlier when we are converting all IV arrays to native arrays. So, uh, just for the pre uh, for the previous example, we had an IV array which converted it to a torch tensor. We passed it to torch.abs when a user uh, tried to call IV.abs with the torch backend set. 
we got the output as a torch tensor now we want to return it as an iv array because we want to make sure for every iv function whenever you pass an iv array you get an iv array out of it so we want to convert this torch tensor into its iv array and this is why uh, this decorator is useful two native arrays and back is just the combination of the two so simply we have all the inputs we convert them to native arrays we pass those uh, to the function we get the result out of it and we convert that result which we've gotten back into an iv array and return an iv array to the user so that you pass an iv array and you get an iv array infer d type now this decorator uh, infer d type and even infer device they are widely used in functions from the creation sub module so this is a decorator which is useful in cases where we want to allow the user to not pass a d type argument so uh, we will just be inferring the d type argument or whatever d type it should be based on what input uh, the user has passed so the way that works is that we first we first checking if the d type argument has been passed if the d type argument has not been passed then we want to infer it from the uh, arguments obviously but for while doing that firstly we just get the first array from the arguments and keyword arguments and we infer the d type from that one so whatever first array was passed out of the arguments and keyword arguments that is what's going to be used for uh, inferring the d type similarly for inferring the device the same thing we check whether an uh, the device argument was passed if it wasn't passed we get the first uh, array from the arguments and keyword arguments and then we just infer the device from that first argument in place update handling so handle out argument is really important so whenever we want to do an in place update uh, and we support the out argument there are cases where a backend function may support the out argument natively and there are cases where a backend may not support the out argument natively so in uh, for example jacks and tensorflow do not support the out argument but torch does support the out argument so in cases where one particular backend is supporting the out argument then we want to use that out argument implementation instead of ours because it is going to be more uh, efficient uh, for that particular back backend so whenever it's uh, applied for that particular backend and it's applicable like the out argument is supported natively we just use that if it is not we want to support it anyway so that even for torch uh, even for tensorflow and jacks you can pass an out argument and it will work for that we have our own in place update function so the way it works is we just checking if it is applicable natively or not if it is applicable natively we convert the out argument to native first and then uh, pass it to the function uh, if it is not then we just using this uh, iv in place update yeah so handle nestable handle nestable is also another decorator which is very useful uh, in cases where we have a container so a container has nested input a lot of lot, multiple arrays at different levels of nesting and when a particular function is called with a container we want to apply that function on all the arrays in on the leaves of those con of that container so this is why we need the handle nestable decorator so in cases when a container is applicable then we are uh, or a container uh, the input is a container we are deferring to the container static function for that particular function which has the uh, handling for uh, the mapping and everything in the nested way so uh, it, sometimes the static container static function is already existing uh, in the code if it is not directly existing in the code we are adding it anyway uh, dynamically so that is uh, how it is using so we are just deferring to that particular function and uh, it handles the internal logic with uh, handling nested inputs and the wrap function at the end now this is just some uh, sub module specific code uh, which may change uh, and these are just the attributes which we are checking uh, attributes in the sense the same things like for example unsupported d type or support native out arguments and so on so as i said with the handle out argument we want to check whether an uh, out argument is supported natively or not Th these are the ways in which it's implemented also for uh, if a data data type is supported or not supported etc and yeah these are the wrappings which are applied so whenever something is applicable then the wrapping is applied if it's not applicable it's not applied um, yeah i think this was it so thank you for watching